Once upon a time, there was an object in the JavaScript wonderland. A malicious user started to pollute this object, which caused some issues. Well, some bigger issues. All right, all right. So today we are talking about JavaScript prototype pollution, which is a vulnerability very specific to JavaScript language itself. And in the recent years, JavaScript have been widely adapted for server-side development uh, with the help of Node runtime. And this class of vulnerability actually abuses some features of JavaScript, which have been there since its existence. And therefore, before jumping right into the vulnerability itself, let's take a step back and start with some basics of JavaScript. So we all must have heard that everything in JavaScript is basically an object. So uh, similar to other programming languages, we have also got some primitive data types in JavaScript. So we have got numbers, we have got strings, we have got arrays, and some other basic data types. And apart from these, we have got objects. And objects are nothing but structures which have some properties and values. So there could be multiple properties and corresponding values to those properties. So let's learn how to basically create an empty object and let's see how it looks like. So I could simply create a variable and assign it to this empty object, which is uh, declared by uh, having a pair of curly braces. So this is syntax in JavaScript to create an empty object. And if you now print or log this X variable, you can see that this is an empty object. So suppose we wanted to add some value or uh, I should say properties to this object, then this is how we could have achieved it. So if I wanted to add a property which is named first, I would do something like this, separated by colon and the value. So this value could be of any data type, any primitive data types, or uh, could be an object itself. So it could be numbers, strings, arrays, but for the sake of simplicity, we are only taking it as a string, uh, which says first property. So if you look at the X object now, it has this property first, which says first property. So if we want to access this property on this object X, what we can do is we can use the dot notations in JavaScript. So it says it goes something like uh, object dot the property name, which is first in this case. And as you can see, the value of the first property was returned. Now there's another way to do this the same thing uh, by having or uh, using the square bracket notation, which goes something like this. So we have square brackets and in between we have the uh, property name as a string. And as you can see that it is the same value or the same result uh, as of dot notations. So now let's say we wanted to add a new property on this existing object X. So this is how we can achieve this. So again, we can use either the dot notation or the square bracket notation and assign some value which could, could, could again have some data type, for example, string, arrays, or something like that. So again, we are um, assigning it a string which says second property. And now the X variable or the object X looks something like this. It has two properties. First whose value is first property and second property which says second property. So we now need to talk about something called as constructors. So constructor functions are basically similar to the normal functions. So they have the same syntax as you would otherwise define some functions in JavaScript. So this is how uh, the constructor function would look like. The only difference in the constructor function and the factory function, which is the simple or the normal functions, is that uh, these constructor function could be used to create new objects. And uh, this is done by using the new keyword. Uh, and everything inside this constructor function, whatever properties you add on this, this keyword uh, is basically added to this uh, to the object that you create out of it. So this keyword is unique to every object that is being created out of this constructor function. So let's look at this. So we have defined our constructor function which is, which is called person. Now, if I want, I want to create a new object, uh, I could define a variable person one, which says new, uh, which is a keyword followed by the constructor function and the arguments, uh, if any, which in this case would be full name and the age. So now what would happen is this person one variable 
uh, or object would hold these two properties, which says full name and age, just as we passed it. Now we could create another object out of it, and we could have a different name here. And as you can see, that person two now holds the full name uh, and the age as well, just as a person one. But depending on the value that we passed, um, the values of the properties in the object looks different. So this is how the person one and person two looks right now. Now let's talk about something called as constructor property, which exists on objects implicitly. So constructor property is nothing but it is a reference to the fun constructor function, which was used to create those objects. So if you want to access the constructor of person one object, which we just created over here, it will return us the constructor function which created this person one object. So in this case, we know that this function was used to create the person one object, and therefore the constructor property would return the same constructor function which was used to create this object. And again, for person two property, uh, person two object as well, we have the same constructor function because both of the objects, person one and person two, were created out of this constructor function. All right, so now that we have talked about JavaScript objects and constructor functions, let's try to understand the term prototype. To understand it, we will start off with a problem and see how, how a, pro a prototype thing will help us in solving it. So the problem is we want to add a new property uh, within every objects we created using our uh, uh, constructor function that is person. So what we want is, is we want to add a new property within our person1 and person2 objects. So let's see. Right now we have person one and we have person two. Both both of them have full name and edge two properties. And uh, if you want to add a new property that is, for example, details, I'm adding it this way. That is manually. I'm adding details within the person one object. And now if I do person one, I will be able to access it. But it's not applicable for person two, right? Because we added it in person one. So that's the problem we want to solve. We want to add this automatically in every object. So for that purposes, we will make use of something called prototype. So let's see. Now we go in the, into the constructor function that is person and within it, we add, within the prototype property, we add the uh, thing we want to add, the property we want to add. So that is details and whatever the content we want to add to it. So that is this. And now if we see, if we access person one details and person two details, both are accessible. But the thing to notice here is that uh, person one dot details and person dot person two dot details have different outputs. So person one dot details is ac actually accessing the details from the, from the one we defined uh, within the object itself and two is taking from somewhere else. So let's see from where it is taking it. Now, if we take person two, we have three things here, edge, full name, and there's the third property that's called underscore, underscore, proto, underscore, underscore. So for, for simplicity, we will call it proto. So now if we go within the proto, proto itself, uh, we have uh, our property called details, which we added here. Uh, here person dot prototype dot details so it seems it points to this so let's see person two proto and uh, person dot proto as you can see both are both actually have the same thing now if we do the same on person dot one we will have the same output and uh, we can also access the same thing by adding person to constructor that is person so now we are referring to this uh, because we are accessing our constructor that is person and within person we will access its prototype so all this have same meanings so this actually points to the the proto thing points to the construct constructors prototype so this way we can access details so what happens is when we say uh, when we asked that we want to access details within person one JavaScript will go and uh, do this thing that is object get on property names person one and it will see okay 
I have details here so it will just print it out because it, it found the details right here in the object itself but when when we see the case of person 2 we don't have it here so it will go ahead and look at the third object which we seen that is proto which is automatically added by JavaScript so it will go inside it uh, and we see that we have details here so it will access it from here and stop here and if it it didn't exist it will go one more above and try to access it here like this and it won't find it here so it it will go as long as uh, it doesn't respond null so now if we do it will actually respond null as you can see because this doesn't exist we are at the top of the prototype chain so what happens is we we request for details properties and it it was never found in the person two object so it will go one one uh, one deep that is uh, underscore underscore proto and uh, it will look for it within this uh, the, within this property uh, uh, within this object and the property was found here so it will stop if it was not found here it will look uh, one more deep and uh, if if it was not found here it will just uh, respond that it, it, it couldn't find that is undefined so that's how prototype prototype chain works if uh, for for the person one case it was found in the object level itself which we set it above here so that uh, that's why uh, it it never met to the to the proto thing so if you see person one dot uh, we can actually access it here as well but uh, because the details was actually accessible in the object itself uh, it never made it to here so that is called prototype chain now what if we do something like this uh, person to dot proto dot proto now as we talk that uh, we will go at the you know top of the prototype chain this is the top of the prototype chain and we add a key here that is uh, something foo and uh, we add its value like pollute now we have added in the you know in the global object itself this uh, foo key is actually added in the global object itself so now if we create any new object that is for example f and we access f.foo it will be available and for that matter now any object you will create will have this uh, foo key uh, full property and that's that's how uh, prototype pollution works so we will see in further video, uh, videos that how this could actually lead to security vulnerabilities and we'll see how how these functions get vulnerable to it and more into it